the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I E Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 15 Priceless Treasure, Chapter 19, Kiss When these words came out, Linley's face couldn't help but change. If it weren't because Salomon was worried about Elquin, he would have killed Linley long ago. After all, as Salomon saw it, Linley was someone who should have been on Elquin's side. Naturally, he wouldn't easily offend Elquin. Salomon, you asshole! Bibi immediately bellowed in fury. I told you, my boss definitely did not reveal your secret. Why are you so convinced that it was my boss who did it? And you want to kill him? You are a Mother Earth King asshole, an asshole. Bibi actually wanted to kill Salomon right now, but his strength was far inferior to Salomon's. Salomon, on this entire way over, Linley remained within the metallic creature. How could he have had the opportunity to reveal your secret? Delia was frantic as well. She was afraid of Linley being killed. Linley just stared at Salomon silently. By now, Linley knew exactly what sort of person this Salomon was. He was the type of person who would pretend to be an extremely good person and to feign kindness for the sake of his goal, in a way which others would not be able to notice at all. However, once he failed in his goals, a type of person like him would reveal his true, ferocious side. Far more terrifying and terrible than ordinary people. Die. You will die. Not just you, Linley. Also, your wife. And your brother, Bibi. All of you will die. Salomon seemed to have gone insane, as he pointed at Linley, Delia, and Bibi. Hearing that her big brother wanted to kill even Bibi, Nis immediately grew frantic. Big brother, Bibi, he. Nis said frantically. Nis. Salomon shouted. Haven't you seen the true faces of these three yet? Bibi didn't have any good intentions when he made friends with you. Nis couldn't help but to turn and look towards Bibi. Bibi's gaze was as ice, and he stared coldly at Salomon. Salomon, I hate being slandered by others. Not only do you slander me, you want to kill my boss and Delia. Then you. Bibi glanced at the nearby Nis. Nis, don't blame me for what I am going to do. Bibi, what are you going to do? Linley could sense that Bibi was behaving differently. Bibi's face was like ice. From within his hands appeared that black dagger, the dagger which Beirut had given him. This is. Elquin's eyes lit up, and he glanced at Bibi in surprise. Bibi then opened his lips wide and a round black pearl floated out from within his lips. This pitch black pearl actually flew into the handle of the dagger, fitting itself into an opening there which it was perfectly fitted for. And then, the surface of the dagger began to be covered with a blue aura. Crackle. Space trembled. Even though the dagger hadn't moved, the blue aura was powerful enough to cause space to tremble. What is this? Salomon, Nis, and the other surviving Hygards including Sperry all were shocked. They could clearly sense the threat which this dagger posed to them. Not a single one of them dared to take on that dagger head on. Lily and Delia were both puzzled as well. Even they hadn't known that Bibi had been hiding this trump card, but the terrifying aura which emanated out from the dagger after the pearl entered it could be sensed clearly. Too terrifying. That aura dot most likely not even a Hygard can take it. Linley had believed all along that given how much Beirut cared about Bibi, he definitely would have given Bibi a trump card for preserving his life. And now, it seemed as though this was it. Bibi, don't. Nis said hurriedly. 
Billy just stared coldly at Salomon. In an icy voice, he said, Salomon, die. The dagger in his hand suddenly flew out. Swish. A black light flashed, and a hole was easily torn in space, as though the space of the infernal realm was just a piece of paper. The power of this attack was simply astonishing and unheard of. Salomon's face changed as well, but the speed of that black light was simply too fast. He wasn't able to dodge. Suddenly, an enormous scarlet blood red hand appeared, and space began to twist into a vortex. Bang! The black light and the scarlet blood red hand collided. The black light immediately flew back into Bibi's hand. Bibi's face had turned somewhat pale, and he stared in astonishment at Elquin. Elquin was sent moving backwards by dozens of meters as well, and he stared in astonishment at the dagger in Bibi's hands. He said to himself in shock, as I thought. I didn't expect that Beirut would actually give a treasure as precious as this to him. This little fellow and Beirut definitely have an extraordinary relationship. Elquin was secretly shocked. Elquin knew exactly how terrifyingly powerful Beirut was. Immediately, his thoughts turned, and Elquin made up his mind. Since this treasure is in this little fellow's hands, I cannot kill this little fellow. Otherwise Dot Beirut will definitely learn of it, and once he has me on his mind, I'll be in for trouble. Lily and the others, including the Hired Fiends and Salomon, were all greatly shocked. They all knew exactly how terrifyingly powerful Elquin was. The three Edward brothers weren't able to resist at all when they had fought. But that queer dagger of Bibi's had actually forced him backwards. But how could they have known? Bibi, that technique of yours. Linley was greatly surprised. Bibi sent through divine sense, I'm not that powerful. The person who forced that fellow to retreat was the power of Grandpa Beirut, which had been contained within that spirit pearl. It can be said that it was Grandpa Beirut who defeated him. Bibi, in truth, just followed the instructions in activating it. Elquin glanced at Bibi, then turned to look at Salomon. Salomon, in order to protect you, I lost a hired artifact which I have been using for a trillion years. Only now did Linley and the others realize that the translucent glove which had been on Elquin's right hand had been torn apart. Beirut really lives up to his reputation. Elquin's heart shuddered. Although he was a reclusive expert, there was still a great gap when compared to the legendary and mighty figure, Beirut, who had suddenly appeared out of nowhere to prominence. Elquin's heart was filled with anger, and he stared at Salomon. A hired artifact which he had been nurturing for over a trillion years was incredibly precious to its user. After all, how could a purchased hired artifact compare to a hired artifact which you had been personally nurturing? I told you. That Delia and that Bibi all have to die. Salomon growled. I cannot kill that Bibi. The others can die. Salomon, don't test my patience further. Elquin said calmly. Fine. Salomon nodded. That little rascal can be spared. In his heart, Salomon still hated Linley the most. Fuzro, handle it. Elquin said calmly. Meow. The golden kitten meowed gently. It was extremely strange. The stone walls of the entire cavern suddenly came pressing down, and the space within the cave immediately shrank in size. The faces of Linley and the others changed dramatically. They saw the stone walls constantly press down towards them, and the other hired fiends immediately began to bellow with rage and strike at the stone walls. Bang! Bang! Explosions could be heard non-stop, but their full strength blows could at most chop out a half meter long hole which would immediately heal. In but a few moments, the space of this cavern had shrunk to less than 30%. 
the mountain walls continued to press them towards that golden magma pool. In other words dot every person within the cave no longer had enough space to stand. They had to hover in the air, hover above that golden magma pool. Even Elquin and Salomon were hovering there. Delia. Hurry up and use your death at Gollum to block below you. Linley was worried that Delia would be dragged into the golden magma pool. Right. Delia nodded gently, and then glanced at Linley. Lord Elquin, Salomon, we didn't interfere. Release us. Sperry and the other five high hoods said hurriedly. Salomon, his heart currently filled with fury, glanced at them coldly. Hem. All of you can die. Fuzro. Elquin said calmly. Meow. The golden kitten purred, a hint of joy seemingly contained within his voice. Instantly. The previously calm and quiet golden magma pool beneath them suddenly transformed into a large number of giant liquid golden hands which snatched at the fiends above. Dozens of enormous hands had erupted forth from this golden magma pool. Swoosh. All of the fiends immediately tried to rely on their speed to dodge. The air above the golden magma pool was filled with countless figures as everyone frantically tried to dodge. Only Elquin, Salomon, Nis, and Bibi weren't being attacked by any of the giant liquid golden hands. Bibi, you and Delia, stay together. Linley shouted mentally. Got it, boss. Bibi immediately drew. Closer to Delia. Indeed, those giant liquid golden hands tried to avoid Bibi and moved away from him. However, those giant liquid golden hands would still move in an arcing route to try and snatch Delia. By being next to Bibi, though, Delia was in less danger now. If this continues, it won't end well. Linley had a terrible feeling, because he knew Dot that there were no corridors nearby. They could dodge for a time, but they couldn't dodge forever. Eventually, they would be caught. Suddenly, a high head was seized by one of the giant liquid golden hands. Upon one giant liquid golden hand grabbing the high head, immediately, the many other giant liquid golden hands surrounded him, then dragged him directly into the golden magma pool. This scene caused the faces of Linley and the others to change. Boss. Bibi's frantic voice rang out in Linley's mind. Linley turned to look. It was Delia who was now surrounded by the giant liquid golden hands. Although Delia had Bibi helping out, her own power was simply too weak. In the end, she was still caught by the giant liquid golden hand, and once she was caught, there was no way she could break free. Crackle. Delia was dragged directly into the golden magma pool. Her feet first entered the pool, and Delia continued to stare upwards towards Linley. Linley seemed to have been gone dumb. Linley. Take care of yourself. Delia's divine sense echoed in Linley's mind. Delia. Linley's eyes instantly turned scarlet red. He shot down like an arrow, ignoring all else as he charged towards Delia. Linley stared at Delia and Delia stared at Linley. In this moment, only Delia's head remained above the surface of the magma pool. The two were only ten meters apart from each other. Given Linley's speed, that distance could be traversed in but the blink of an eye. But in that instant, one scene after another of the two being together flashed through Linley's mind, as fast as lightning. In his youth, the two had been classed together at the institute. Ten years of parting, then their reunion. The anarchic lands, their marriage, their child. Their arrival in the infernal realm. Delia had followed him here without reservations, and they had adventured through the infernal realm. Silently, noiselessly, Delia had become the other half of his life. Neither of them could be without the other. 
In the instant she was dragged down into the magma pool, seeing how Linley ignored everything else and immediately charged down, Delia's tears began to fall. Boom! Magma sprayed everywhere. Linley burrowed into the magma, clutching Delia's already submerging body. The earth and Nora surrounding Linley immediately covered Delia as well, as a pulse guard armor formed on Delia's body. Only, the corrosive power of that golden magma was simply too great. The pulse guard armor couldn't help but begin to tremble and melt. Linley frantically used the divine power of his divine earth clone to maintain the pulse guard armor. Within the magma pool, the yellow earth and Nora covered Linley and Delia, and a strange type of spiritual energy slowly circled around Linley and Delia's consciousness. That strange energy was actually able to locate the flaw in Linley's damaged soul protecting sovereign artifact and easily slip through. Linley and Delia both begin to grow woozy. Linley. You are such a fool. Delia's eyes were filled with tears. We roamed the infernal realm together. Even if we die, we die together. Delia was on the verge of losing consciousness, but she still managed to smile. Linley. I feel very satisfied with the life I have lived. And then, she struggled hard to raise her head and kiss Linley on the lips, and Linley kissed Delia back. In the last moment before Linley lost all consciousness, one scene after another from his youth until now flashed through his mind like lightning. His meeting with Grandpa Doring. Killing the King of the Kingdom of Fenlai. His fame shaking the world in the O'Brien Empire. The founding of the Barach Empire. The adventure in the necropolis of the gods. The destruction of the Radiant Church. And then their adventuring in the Infernal Realm, where his wife had accompanied him until death. When they had arrived in the Infernal Realm, Linley had been mentally prepared to die. After all, in the constant slaughter field that was the Infernal Realm, anybody could die. Even if he died dot he would die happy. He was dying alongside his beloved. Me too. I am very satisfied with my life. And then, his consciousness was gone. Book 15. Priceless Treasure, Chapter 20, Talisman. Drip, drip. The golden magma pool continued to bubble and boil. Those giant liquid golden hands now tried to snatch the three remaining hyads. Only three lucky survivors were left. Salomon, that bastard. Even if we die, we need to make him die with us. Sperry sent a message with divine sense to the other two. They could already feel that dodging was very difficult. Right. Make him die with us. The fiends of the infernal realm were all mentally prepared for death. Only, they didn't want to die, and even if they were to die, they wouldn't let their enemies get off lightly. Swoosh. 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 The three hired fiends simultaneously charged towards Salomon, but before they even drew near him, that sallow, charred yellow hand once again came slapping towards them. Bang! One of the hired fiends' skull was smashed and exploded apart. Elquin. The other two hired fiends were shocked. Clearly, this Elquin wouldn't permit them to kill Salomon. Kill his little sister. 
Sperry and the other hired fiend, knowing that death was nigh, in their fury decided that they would kill whoever they could lay their hands on. The two fiends just barely dodged those giant liquid golden hands, then charged straight towards Ness, hovering there in midair. At this moment, Bibi was hovering there in midair, unmoving. When he saw Lin Li and Delia be dragged into the magma pool, he was stunned. But then, Boss Dot isn't dead. Bibi's eyes were filled with surprised joy. I can still sense the boss's soul. The two were connected spiritually. As long as Linley was alive, Bibi would naturally be able to sense him. The golden magma pool was only so big. Given the speed of these high-head fiends, Nis was only able to move slightly before the high-head fiends arrived in front of her. A blurry, indistinct blade shadow came chopping down, and Nis's face instantly turned white. Glang. A metallic sound could be heard. Nis felt that she was being tightly embraced, and she opened her eyes in shock. Bibi. It was Bibi who had embraced her and had taken this attack for her. Ah. Because of the counter force from his chopping attack, that high head fiend was caught by those giant liquid golden hands. Although he frantically struggled, in the end, he was still dragged down by those giant liquid golden hands into the golden magma pool, and not a hint of life was left after that. Crackle. The many giant liquid golden hands spread out like the petals of a floor, directly swallowing the final hired fiend, Sperry, then pulling him into the golden magma pool. Bibi, are you alright? Nis said, worried. But as soon as she spoke out, she immediately came to her senses. She realized that Linley had very possibly revealed her big brother's secret, and that this Bibi had most likely intentionally made friends with her. I'm fine. That bastard actually even used a soul attack. Bibi's face was somewhat ashen, but then he was stunned as well. He noticed Nis's expression. Bibi let out a bit to laugh, then gently released Nis. As Nis left his embrace, for some reason, she felt her heart ache. Bibi rubbed his nose. I was wrong to think my love was reciprocated. Nis, hearing this, felt a miserable feeling in her heart, but this information about the secret being revealed was like a thorn in her heart. But wait, if Bibi had truly lied to me, he wouldn't have risked his own life to save me just now. Take care of yourself. Ninny. The sound rang out next to her ears, and then Dot splash. Only now did Nis realize that Bibi had already jumped into the magma pool. Nis was instantly stunned. In her mind, she could still clearly see that rowdy, playful, but towards her always considerate straw hat wearing youth. Bibi Dot died? Nis felt as though her heart was being ripped apart. Nis. What are you doing? Salomon shouted, while at the same time he flew to Nis's side. Big brother, Bibi, he. Nis's eyes were beginning to be covered with a layer of mist. Salomon shouted, what are you thinking? That Bibi did it on purpose. His body is tough, so he knew he would be able to take that blow. He did that on purpose, because it wouldn't pose any threat to him. You need to remember, Linley is our enemy. It's a good thing that he died, because otherwise... Salomon's heart was still filled with hatred. But, but if Bibi didn't care about me, he didn't have to save me. Nis argued. That's exactly what he wanted you to think. Salomon said coldly. Nis, that Bibi is extremely crafty and sly. With a rumbling sound. The four walls of the stone cave once more spread out, and the space of the cave expanded once more. Elquin, holding that little golden kitten, landed on the flat ground, and Salomon pulled his little sister to fly over as well. At the bottom of the golden magma pool, there was a place where the magma had naturally split open, forming a true, empty space. 
Lily and Delia were currently embracing each other there. What dot what's going on? Lily and Delia both woke up. Delia immediately used her divine power to repair her body while staring at Linley. Linley shook his head as well. I don't know either. And then, Linley and Delia both began to laugh. Linley. I thought I was dead. Delia said gently. Me too. I thought I was going to die. Linley felt a warm feeling in his heart. With a wife like this in his life. What more could he ask for? After truly having walked on the fine line between life and death, this time, Linley had truly believed he was dead. But who would have imagined that he would survive? This sort of feeling truly was astonishing and shook his soul. Linley. In Linley's arms, Delia looked up towards Linley. After this experience, my heart is calm. Linley, Although the infernal realm has many dangers, as long as you are by my side, I won't be afraid no matter where I go. Linley held Delia, his heart filled with joy and bliss. He didn't say a word. You two, husband and wife, are really enjoying yourselves. A deep voice rang out in the mind of Linley and Delia. Linley and Delia were both shocked. You are. Linley spoke. Everyone else who entered this liquefied pool of gold flame is dead, aside from you two. Even the Hyads are dead. The deep voice continued. Linley and Delia instantly understood who this person was. You are the Volcano Titan? Linley said. Right. You may address me as Fuzro. The deep voice said. Fuzro? Linley thought back to how the black-robed Elquin had held that golden kitten in his arms. Elquin seemed to have addressed the kitten as Fuzro. You are a member of the four divine beasts clan, but more importantly, the relationship between you and that Bibi is quite deep. Thus, Master ordered me to spare your lives when pulling you into the liquefied pool of gold flame, so as to temporarily fool that Salomon. You can wait right here for now. I won't claim your little lives. I imagine that you know that I can kill you at any time. Don't go out. And then, the voice disappeared. Linley and Delia exchanged a glance, then laughed. Delia said, Linley, before this, I saw that Elquin was afraid to do anything to Bibi. He wanted to spare Bibi. I was wondering dot why didn't he spare us? So actually, that was this Elquin's plan all along. Linley laughed as well. Indeed, everyone else who had entered the golden magma pool had died, so as to give Salomon a false impression dot that anyone who entered the golden magma pool would die. Actually, the golden magma pool was under the control of Fuzro. If he didn't want someone to die of course that person wouldn't die. This Fuzro's power truly is terrifying. Linley was secretly shocked. That spiritual energy had gone straight through the floor in his soul defense. Linley had known all along that powerful Hyads were capable of this. But now, he had actually encountered it. Plonk. Suddenly, a figure charged down at high speed through the pool, then straight towards him. Linley could clearly sense the ripples of that soul. Bibi, what are you doing here? Bibi quickly charged down into this area of land. Boss, so you really are alright? Bibi saw Linley and Delia, and was instantly overjoyed. You guys really are a pain. Fuzro's voice rang out once more in the minds of the three. Who is he? Bibi's face changed. Linley explained, he's the Volcano Titan, Fuzro. Fuzro? Can it be that he's the kitten? Bibi's eyes lit up. Don't mention kittens. Fuzro's voice exploded in fury. Enough. The three of you, obediently stay here and don't go out. The sound from outside will carry in here. Don't worry. 
though dot your voices won't be able to transmit out. Linley, Delia, and Bibi were at the bottom of the golden magma pool. Indeed, they could hear the voices from outside. Elquin, holding the golden kitten, laughed calmly as he looked at Salomon. Salomon, all of them are dead now. I've given you face. You should give me the treasures of your clan to me now, right? Is it on you, or is it somewhere else? Nis appeared quite nervous. Salomon laughed calmly. Right. I admit that I am a member of the Boyd clan, but Mr. Elquin, I have to tell you something. Speak, Elquin frowned. He felt as though something was amiss. The amount of wealth I have on me, and in fact even including all the wealth I have in other places, amounts to less than 10 billion ink stones. Salomon laughed calmly. 10 billion ink stones, to ordinary hyads, was an enormous figure. But to Elquin, it was nothing at all. To the Boyd clan, it was comparable to a single hair on the body of nine bulls. You are playing me for a fool? Elquin's face changed. Salomon hurriedly said, No, no, I'm not playing you. To tell you the truth, those two old servants of mine did in fact bring a vast fortune to me, but dot I've already offered the fortune to someone else. To who? Elquin frowned. You'd best not lie to me. To Lord Aiken, Aiken. Salomon replied. Elquin's face changed. Aiken? Elquin couldn't help but feel angered, and he shouted angrily, Salomon, Lord Aiken is indeed powerful and I, Elquin, don't dare irritate him, but Dot do you think that just because you randomly report a name to me, that I will give up? Why don't you say Beirut? Why don't you go ahead and say that you gave it to the Almighty Sovereign, the Red Bud Ruler? Anybody can name names. With a flip of his hand, Salomon revealed a black talisman which was covered with complicated runes. You should recognize this talisman. Salomon said. Harm. Elquin's face changed, and he was instantly speechless. He could recognize it. This was indeed Lord Akin's talisman. Since Salomon had this talisman, then the relationship between himself and Akin must be extraordinary, or perhaps Dot Akin had ordered him to carry out something. Akin, without question was one of if not the most powerful figure in the Red Bud continent. Some even suspected that he had reached the level of being a paragon. He had previously been an Azura, but then he had voluntarily stepped down and allowed another seven-star fiend to take over. Nobody believed that it was because Akin wasn't strong enough. Everyone knew exactly how terrifying Akin was. Although he was not an Azura, his power was far greater than that of most Hazuras. Akin of the Red Bud Continent. Beirut of the Bloodridge Continent. They were all dazzling, legendary figures. Drip, drip. The golden magma in the cave continued to bubble and hiss. Other than that, it was silent. Inigo, what say you? What should we do? Elquin turned to stare behind him. Suddenly, a tunnel appeared in the stone wall, and a person came out. It was Inigo. Inigo stepped out. He had been listening all along. Although this Salomon has the talisman of Lord Akin, but, that doesn't mean that he doesn't have the wealth of his clan on him. Inigo said. You are. Salomon and Nis stared at him. I saw you before at the Castle of Sand. Nis called out in surprise. Inigo was slightly startled. Right. When the Castle of Sand had collapsed, Inigo and the others had indeed been seen. Inigo then smiled slightly. Right. Salomon, I am the person who was pursuing and attacking you. What of it? That time? Salomon began to understand. Right. It was I who told Lord Elquin of your identity. Inigo let out a chuckle. 
Hem. When you were at the Jingan Prefecture, you were kicked out by your boy clan. Although that was a minor matter, at that time, I just so happened to notice. Salomon was stunned. Pity that kid named Linley. He really was wrongly accused by you. Inigo began to laugh. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.